Welcome back to Echo Ridge, where we're going to start this episode off with a little bit of chaos. Our liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are chock full, except every once in a while, the automation on this high pressure gas vent sort of fails. Despite this hydro sensor being set at 250 kilos, every once in a while, something would flash here, causing it to go green, causing the high pressure gas vent to open, which allows more oxygen in. Right now, we're at 423 kilos. This is okay until we cross the threshold of about 500 kilos. Because when that happens, did you see it? It just happened right there. Don't know what's causing it. Because we're not cold enough to freeze any. But it's happening nonetheless. But as I was saying, it's okay until we get up over 500. Because then we'll have another layer of liquid oxygen form, which would cause this tile to no longer be in a vacuum. Which would then cause the oxygen in the pipe to freeze, thus cracking the pipe and making everything go horribly, horribly wrong. I have not seen the same issue happen with the hydrogen, but who knows? It's been a lot of cycles of me running it in times nine speed, and there's no telling what kind of little issues pop up when you're running the game this fast. I even ended up switching speed mod apps, and that way I could use my times nine speed here in vanilla, because it took a lot of rocket trips to be able to knock out all of this research. We still have one left, but I don't think we have the time for that. Because either we start drinking this oxygen, or we're going to have problems. Speaking of problems, we were creating so much petroleum, this liquid reservoir got full, this liquid reservoir got full, and this liquid reservoir got full. And when all the buffer tanks are full, there's nowhere for the petroleum to go. Even though we were consistently sending out the rocket that's using 1.8 tons of petroleum per trip. And the oil gets backed up because, well, there's just no more room for it to create petroleum. Which was all fine and good until this battery became flooded. So we've put in a few mush tiles just to make sure it doesn't happen again. Additionally, I lowered this hydro sensor because of the every once in a while water forming on this layer. I was getting a little worried that we'd have two layers of oil and then a layer of water would pop up and interfere with this visco gel lock. And that would be bad for business. Which reminds me. A lot of people keep saying in the comments, hey, now that you've got visco gel, why don't you go ahead and replace a few of your liquid locks? Like possibly these two here, or even this one. And the reason why I don't is because these are very strong and very stable liquid locks. The only way you're damaging this liquid lock is by actually making it flash to sour gas at up over 538 degrees. And with there being so much petroleum sitting in here, it would take quite amount of heat. Visco gel, when it gets up over 480 degrees, it actually flashes into another liquid in the form of naphtha. But that's not even the main problem with visco gel, because if any liquids interact with this, it'll mess with the visco gel's viscosity and break the liquid lock. So I only use these when there is no chance another liquid is going to come into contact. But when you need a liquid lock that's going to last the test of time, this is the best method. Another thing that happened when we started not using our petroleum fast enough was the stable here started rising with petroleum, which caused this smart battery and the hydrogen generator to become flooded. Well, when it did, all of this excess hydrogen wasn't being used because again, we're not using any liquid hydrogen here. So it all backed up in this pipe. And when the hydrogen generator was flooded, we weren't consuming it, which causes more hydrogen to back up in the spawn which means some of the hydrogen was going to end up in our oxygen pipes. And finally, with this smart battery flooded, it means the petroleum generators weren't able to run. And when the petroleum generators can't run, that's bad. Because these two petroleum generators provide the majority of power for the entire colony. Which then begs the question, are we going to be able to use enough petroleum once we get rid of the petroleum rocket engine? Yeah, I think we'll do okay but it would be helpful if we were using a little bit more power. And it just so happens we can make this thermo aqua tuner work a little bit more. Right now it's only working on average of 45% per cycle. Well, if we start throwing more regolith at it, it's gonna have to work more to keep the whole system cool. So we'll just select some regolith here, let the auto sweeper do its thing. And now that we're running regolith through the system again, the thermo aqua tuner is gonna end up working just a little bit more, hopefully, enough to account for the usage of the petroleum rocket. Speaking of rocketry, we're actually able to start exploring the 40,000 kilometer ring by loading the rocket up with 1,500 kilos worth of oxalite. I'm pretty sure we could probably have gone all the way up to the 50,000 kilometer ring, 
But here we've discovered another source of niobium. Nothing to really write home about, but I still at least wanted to start going to that ring. I had been sending repeat rockets to the first and second set of rings just because they're so much faster. Going to the 40,000 kilometer ring, just like the 30,000 kilometer ring, takes 12 cycles. Well, minus a little bit because we boost our rockets. But still, 12 cycles for 100 data banks? It's still a little bit better than sending the rocket four times to the first ring, because when you send a rocket to the first ring four times, we're not going to be getting the full 50 data banks each time, but we still got some data banks, but we also were able to load up on more ISO resin and niobium. In fact, we now have one ton worth of insulation. With the ability to make more, because we're up over six tons of ISO resin, but unfortunately we're starting to run low on reed fibers. Haha, <laughs> yes, there's more. I don't know what happened, okay? All of a sudden, all the Drecos were gone. And you'll see that this coolant is coming out at between 2 and 5 degrees. Which means this mealwood is now too cold to grow. Which is probably the source of what happened to the Drecos. The breeder Dreco couldn't eat, starved, and with no breeder Dreco, it means all the starvation Drecos are gone as well. And unfortunately, I didn't catch it in time to transfer one of the Drecos from this room back over to this room. Why is it doing that to begin with? Well, it's because I had set the liquid pipe thermal sensor down to 10 degrees. So whenever it does decide to cool it, let's say the temperature's at 11 degrees, it makes that water down to minus 3 or minus 4 degrees. So we're going to raise this back up just a smidge. But here's the kicker. Echo, why would you reduce it down to 10 degrees? Well, I don't remember doing that. I've had that coolant loop set on, I believe, 20 or 25 degrees for the entirety of the playthrough. I could have set it without thinking, or it could have been one of those times where it sets itself. Okay, Echo, that's great. We love chaos and all, but what are we doing today? Well, I think we're going to the Temporal Terror, which means we need to get rid of this rocket, put in a hydrogen rocket, and then we need to start loading up the fuel and the oxalite. Additionally, while we won't be making any changes to our liquid locks, I think we can do a little bit of renovation in here. We won't be getting rid of this setup because I am desperately waiting for a Dreco to come through in the printing pod so we can start this whole thing up again. Because right now we're down to 79 reed fiber and it's sort of a limiting factor in the creation of insulation and repairing Atmo suits. Goodbye to the ESS dumpster rocket Mark II. You were a faithful rocket and you served us well. Now the first thing that I think we're going to get rid of is the pips. Remember, the only reason the pips were here is for dirt to feed this one mealwood. That's it. Well, and also to do the basic research. But we're all done with basic research, so we don't need that anymore. Additionally, we're all done with advanced research, so we don't necessarily need a water tank either. And right now we have 114 tons of dirt. And hypothetically, even though this colony will not be around then, if we ever did need more dirt, we could go to one of these terrestrial planets. The first one we found is in the 80,000 kilometer ring, but you'll see, they'll give you 20% dirt, which would be more than enough for the occasional supply run. And for those of you wondering why I don't just get a Dreco from space, well, I can't find one. None of these planetoids have Drecos. And while it would have been a great use of the biological cargo bay to get our stable going again, apparently we don't get Drecos in the star map in this run. I don't know if that is a just this playthrough thing, or if it is in every playthrough. Because there are some critters out here, just not the critter we're looking for. So, long story short, we don't need dirt anymore, which means we don't need pips. Now, unfortunately, we still do need bristle blossoms, because they are a source of food for us. Yes, we do get some barbecue from these wonderful molten slicksters, which, by the way, we're up to 70 in this room. In fact, a properly running slickster ranch would be able to feed just over five duplicates on barbecue if we were turning all of their eggs into meat. But as it stands, only the molten slickster eggs are being eventually turned into meat, although it's a little slower than an evolution chamber. They still evolve, it just takes them a little bit longer. But if you remember, some of the times they're going to be laying larva eggs, and when they do, those larva eggs are being turned into omelets. So we're not getting the maximum throughput of barbecue from this one stable. So I'm going to consider this stable only able to support four duplicates. 
To supplement that, we have bristle blossoms. And remember, it takes three bristle blossoms to feed one duplicate. Right now, we have 20. So we can almost feed seven duplicates off of just bristle blossoms. So as you can tell, we are gaining in galleries, but it's very, very slight. So I think I want to increase the output of these bristle blossoms. And if we do that, we might be able to grab some more dupes because you know the duplicates would love to have more friends here. So let's start off by building our wonderful hydrogen engine, which in vanilla only cost 500 steel. Now, as we build these things up, we are gonna have to put in piping. So we're gonna have to pre-plan where everything's going so we can get across. Normally this is not a big deal because we would just put gantries all up and down here. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of room for gantries. Now's the time to figure out how many fuel tanks and how many oxidizer tanks we're actually gonna use. Well, considering that we're going to the temporal tear, I know we're gonna need a lot of fuel and a lot of liquid oxidizer. The reason being is it's in the 180,000 kilometer ring. I wonder what happens when you send a research module to the temporal tear. I mean, it says it has a vacuum, but then it has two unidentified resources here. We're gonna want the liquid fuel tank for the hydrogen to be as close to this liquid hydrogen tank as possible. And I believe the number is probably three fuel tanks and one liquid oxidizer tank. I think a rocket this size would be able to get us there. Now, I know a lot of you love to use the Ani rocket assistant, and I sometimes will check it out when I'm trying to do different little weird things. But mostly, I just like to wing it. I think we're also gonna add a research module just because I don't think I've ever sent a research module there, just to see what happens. And then we'll finish it off with a wonderful command capsule. Now I've built the rocket using the priority zero by A squared. It is a wonderful new mod I've been using that is pretty quickly becoming one of my staples. So hats off to A squared for their amazing work on this very useful mod. It allows you to set the priority of anything you want to build to zero. So the duplicates will not come and build it or even drop off materials to it. So it's great for planning things out without having to worry about the dupes getting all in a tussie. In this case, we're using it to find out where the ports are. We need to get liquid oxygen up here and liquid hydrogen to these three ports. Now in connecting these up, I would love to use some of this insulation, but we don't have enough reed fiber to be able to make any more. And even using liquid pipes made out of insulation, we wouldn't be able to get very far because they still cost 100 kilos each. Now you might be wondering what the difference between insulated liquid pipes made out of insulation versus a regular liquid pipe made out of insulation is. Well, to help me explain this a little bit, we're gonna head below the colony and set up a small little diagram to help explain this issue because it can be somewhat complicated. Here we have liquid pipes made out of standard insulation. Here we have insulated liquid pipes made out of insulation as denoted by the giant eye. When a liquid is coming out of this liquid reservoir, going through these liquid pipes made out of insulation, oxygen not included is gonna figure out the overall thermal conductivity by averaging the thermal conductivity of both the pipe and the liquid. In this case, thermal conductivity of insulation is zero, but if we were to use liquid hydrogen, for example, the thermal conductivity is 0.1. So then our average overall thermal conductivity is 0.05. Whereas when the game is figuring out the thermal conductivity between two components and one of them is insulated, for instance, liquid hydrogen going through an insulated liquid pipe made out of insulation, it's going to use the thermal conductivity of the insulated material. In this case, it's zero. So the overall thermal conductivity being applied to the liquid hydrogen going through these pipes is going to be zero. To sum that up, hopefully a little bit better, if the component has the insulated tag, the thermal conductivity is exactly what it says on the insulated piece. All right, Echo. So then what's better, using a liquid pipe made out of insulation or an insulated liquid pipe made out of something else? For instance, igneous rock or ceramic. Let's take a quick look. Here we have a liquid pipe made out of insulation. We know its thermal conductivity is zero. We're gonna use liquid hydrogen as the example. So any liquid hydrogen going through this liquid pipe is going to have its thermal conductivity averaged and it's going to end up at 0.05. Here we have an igneous rock insulated liquid pipe. So the liquid hydrogen going through it is going to use the thermal conductivity of the pipe alone since it has the insulated tag. 
So its overall thermal conductivity is going to be 0.063. Not quite as good as the liquid pipe made out of insulation. But the insulated liquid pipe made out of ceramic only has a thermal conductivity of 0.019. Which means insulated liquid pipe made out of ceramic is better than the standard liquid pipe made out of insulation. I have no idea when I got them, but apparently I've been sitting on 10 thimble reed seeds. Well, that kind of makes the thimble reed problem go away, doesn't it? So now, in addition to our wonderful bristle blossoms, we can start growing thimble reed in our beautiful new greenhouse. I wonder how long I've had those thimble reed seeds just sitting around. But let's go ahead and supercharge everything in the greenhouse by the use of a farm station. Now, the farm station requires five kilos worth of fertilizer and somebody that has crop tending. Well, Squishat's already a rancher, so I figure we can go ahead and give them one more skill in crop tending. Now they have a morale need of 14 and their current morale is 15. I also just noticed that our light only extends to this bristle blossom here. So we might as well change these over to thimble reeds instead. And what's amazing about this setup is the thimble reed already grows pretty quickly and only takes two cycles. But when you give it the farmer's touch, it's gonna grow twice as fast with the plus 100 growth speed. Our wonderful new rocket is complete. And thanks to the three kilns, we were able to build all these insulated liquid pipes out of ceramic. Now, it's still not gonna be great. For instance, you can see we just had one or two blobs when I connected everything up that was stuck here that then went across these bridges. Well, when it heated up, it then cracked the pipes and now we have a little bit of damage here. I'm not too concerned. As long as it can get out of these pipes without cracking, I don't mind if it cracks these pipes because we can fix them. Again, this is definitely not a perfect system. I should have had return pipes built in, but this isn't a big deal. Some of you have suggested that we use the liquid meter valve, and this would be a decent use case for them, except for one problem. The liquid meter valve would end up turning everything off. The hydrogen or the oxygen would end up sitting in these pipes here and we can't get to these pipes to repair them. So instead, we're just gonna use the old signal switch method. We're gonna let some of it go, and then we're gonna stop it. And we'll do that until just before the liquid oxidizer tank becomes full, and then we'll turn it off. The same thing for the fuel tanks. Speaking of which, let's get those fuel tanks filled. So far, so good. The liquid hydrogen is making it to the first fuel tank without issue. And remember, there is some heat being put into the liquid because these insulated liquid pipes right now are sitting at 49 degrees. It's not a lot because we're using that thermal conductivity of 0 0.019 and the liquid's not sitting there for very long, but it still does have an effect. And it looks like we don't have a problem hitting the second liquid fuel tank either. In fact, it's almost already full. We're gonna be hitting bottom here soon though, because remember we wanna keep a certain level of liquid hydrogen in this tank to ensure that the temperature stays stable. All said and done, we got 472 kilos out of the third liquid fuel tank. Not too shabby. Let's go ahead and fill it up with liquid oxidizer and see how far that brings us. With that much fuel and liquid oxidizer to match, we can get all the way out to the 140,000 kilometer ring. 40,000 kilometers, too shy for the temporal tear. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for a little bit more liquid hydrogen to fill up in this tank. I just realized I could fix this one without much fanfare. This one's the real problem. I mean, if this rocket shaft would eventually vacuum out, we could then just walk in there and fix it. While we wait on the hydrogen, let's return back to our renovations. As you can see, we're sitting up almost 300,000 calories, thanks to the increased growth speed of our wonderful bristle blossoms, which means I think it's time to start hiring more dupes. In fact, this Herald here has farming, building, and tidying with a green thumb. And with our new greenhouse, I think they'll be perfect. Welcome dupe number nine, Whiskey T Fox. Now, unfortunately, we only have beds for eight people. So we're gonna have to make a few more. And knowing that Whiskey's not gonna be the last person, I think we're also gonna have to adjust our mess hall as well. There we go, that's a perfect addition. Now we have enough room for 11. We could have squeezed more in. We didn't necessarily need this ladder. We could have just left this open and put another mess table here and it still would have ended up as the same room. But I've always liked mess halls with ladders in them. Kind of like a two-story room. But I don't like the idea of sitting at 11 dupes. It's just not a round enough number for me. So we're gonna go ahead and deconstruct this pedestal and put one more mess table here. 
And after finding a new home for the bioluminous rock, we now have seating for 12 in our mess hall. Nine downstairs and three upstairs. The folks upstairs are just going to have to get used to it being also a liquid storage area. We don't have room elsewhere for it. With the idea that we wanted to go up to 12 dupes now, we needed to make some changes to this bomb. The two electrolyzers could provide enough oxygen for a little over 16 dupes. But remember, we only had two gas pumps providing oxygen to vents. The third one was only going to liquid oxygen. So, that's where we made our change. 50% of the oxygen coming out of this gas pump is going to go towards the vents. The other 50% is going to go towards liquid oxygen production. And with each gas pump being able to supply oxygen for five duplicates, this gives us enough capacity for 12 and a half. And the great news with us breathing more oxygen means more hydrogen is going to be created, which means more hydrogen for our wonderful tank. But now we need some bedrooms, four more to be specific. And I think this time we're going to make them out of race car beds and regular comfy beds. I am really looking forward to when Clay releases the details on the new drop system, because I am jonesing for a wonderful bouncy castle bed and a rocket bed. Now this meant we had to get rid of our skill scrubber and our triage cots, but let's be honest, we never need triage cots anyways. I just realized we can free up some more space here because we don't need the research station or the supercomputer anymore. And with our new luxury barracks complete, yeah, we had to make some slight modifications over here because remember it has to be four tiles high. I think we're ready to take another dupe. So no matter what, we're grabbing one from this pod. Oh. Maybe I spoke too soon. It's a doctor with undigging and unconstructive. So they can't dig, yet they have a skill in hard digging. And they can't build. The only good thing they have is doctoring. And then we have an undigging digger doctor. Well, Travaldo, I think you're going to be it. Welcome to the colony, dupe number 10, Victor Neves. I mean, they literally just became a doctor two seconds ago, and they've already started complaining that there's no triage cots here. Being that we have petroleum, in other words, we can actually make plastic if we ever need it. I think we're actually going to get rid of the Draco Ranch. Now this is going to be a pain in the butt getting rid of because it's filled with hydrogen. But we just so happen to have a need for hydrogen in this colony. So why don't we grab it all and somehow send it all the way over here to our liquid hydrogen tank. Here we go. Perfect. With all the hydrogen gone, we can finally get rid of all these insulated tiles. That's going to feel great. I think we'll also put a plastic tile here. That way, when we ruin this liquid lock, we'll be able to mop up the brine. Meanwhile, you know I've always been a sucker for our bubbles. This one's a hot mess, but they'll work. Welcome to the colony, Skadavi. It figures. As soon as I get rid of that wonderful little Dreco ranch, they finally give us a Drecklet. But it's okay. We don't need you anymore. In fact, we're going to take this Marie instead. Welcome to the colony. It's last dupe, Travis Wyatt. But for all that remodeling, we were able to add an arcade. Well, Ani calls it a recreation room, but you know good and well that's an arcade. Look at that. Three arcade cabinets. We moved the bioluminous rock because it just seemed like it fit here. Couple of paintings. Even a nice soda fountain. Now I know what you're wondering. Each of these arcades takes 1200 watts. Where did you find the space to put the transformers? Well, a little bit of here, there, and everywhere. We added another transformer here. One down here where the extra kilns were, and then the Slicksters said they didn't mind having a transformer right next to them. The last thing we have left to do is send Ed off to the last mission they'll ever go on. And of course, one more time, the game is trolling me with meteors. Just let me send the rocket. And if you're wondering why the rocket shaft is so steamy, we've put a bottle empty here just to get rid of all those extra nuisance liquids like the brine and the salt water. And without further ado, I think we're finally ready. Good luck, Ed. Now that's rather annoying. See, I can't do the nice cinematic send-off for Ed because the alert came up that we have achieved the imperative of the Great Escape. But you at least get the point. Spoiler warning, we're gonna let this play out. That way we can see Ed in action as they fly to the Temporal Tear. First, we have the nice dramatic zoom out of the colony. Ah, very nice. Look at that arcade room. And then here we go. Yep, that's Ed. It may not look like Ed, but trust me, it's Ed. Bye, Ed! Despite the fact that we know it would take probably 50, 60 cycles to get there, the rocket no longer appears. Which means we could actually build a new rocket. But I think we'll save that for another series. I hope you had a wonderful time on the mini base series. And I'm sure some of you are sad to see it go. But don't you worry. 
I guarantee you're going to like the next one. I'm about 95% sure what we're going to do, but let me know in the comments below what you'd really like to see. So until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.